Today I'll be showing you how to build a super cheap and very efficient Wither Skeleton only farm in Minecraft Bedrock Edition. What you see is what you get with this farm. Everything is incredibly easy to build. It is very, very resource light. There is basically no redstone. This farm produces over 350 Wither Skulls per hour, nearly 5,000 coal per hour, over 8,100 bones per hour, and... 39 shulker boxes full of stone soul herds. Overall, you get about 13,400 items per hour if you build a farm this size, but of course you could build it smaller and get less rates. To give you a taste for the rates, this is what you get in roughly 10 minutes of using the farm. Over 12 stacks of coal, over 18 stacks of bones, 59 wither skulls, a little bit of gold things from the zombie pigmen, and of course you also get six and a half shulker boxes of stone swords which you are welcome to throw straight into lava. After an hour of using the farm, you'll have roughly five full shulkers of bones and about two and a half shulker boxes of coal as well. And of course, you'll also have about five and a half stacks of wither skulls. So this is a very, very productive farm. This farm is also nether only and can be used with a single player. So there is no nether portals and everything about this farm is purely within the nether. So you can AFK for as long as as you want even overnight if you feel like it. You can use it on any simulation distance, realms, or servers. Wherever you want to build this farm, you are perfectly safe to do so. You might be wondering how the farm works, and it's incredibly straightforward. We have a wither rose planted on each one of the spawn spots, and this only allows wither skeletons to spawn. And as soon as they spawn in, they are attracted to this piglin in the middle. This guy can never be reached or damaged, and they just basically just jump straight down into to this trident killer where the looting three effect is applied to each and every single one of them giving you the best rates for the wither skulls and other items it really is that simple there isn't anything else to it what you see is what you get it is the simplest wither skeleton farm that you're going to get on a bedrock edition and at 13 and a half thousand items per hour you really can't complain either this is also a great experience farm because you can afk below the farm and have all the mobs give you their experience directly. The secret to this farm is the piglin in the middle. Wither skeletons really hate piglins and they can detect them from quite a long distance away. So as you can see anywhere in this entire circle right here is the range that a wither skeleton will run towards the piglin. So one piglin can cover a massive area of the nether and you can get over 40 spawn spots in that area providing you with a massive amount of rates. If you wanted to you could even expand this farm and have multiple piglins to cover a larger area of the nether, increasing your rates. This farm just became possible thanks to a bug fix in the most recent update with Wither Roses. Now only Wither Skeletons will spawn on Wither Roses and zombie, zombie Pigmen will also spawn on it too, but that's easy enough to solve. Turns out all you need is a glass block next to the Wither Rose and no more Zombie Pigmen will spawn, only Wither Skeletons, so that's kind of a nice bonus. So yes, this farm does require Wither Roses, but luckily Wither Rose farms are actually really easy to build, and this farm doesn't require that many Wither Roses either. Other farms like this might require hundreds of wither roses because they put them down on every single block, but we only put them down on the spawn spots, so even with this relatively larger design, you only need 40 roses. I've already made a wither rose farm tutorial, so just go ahead and use that thing one time, and then that'll give you all the roses that you need to build this wither skeleton farm. When it comes to building a wither skeleton farm, getting a good nether fortress is absolutely critical, so what I would recommend doing is finding your your world seed inside the game menu and just using that seed and making a new world. Explore that world in creative mode and then you'll find a nether fortress a lot faster. You could also make a creative copy of your survival world and just do it that way, whatever works for you. You can also use the website chunkbase.com to find nether fortresses for you. All you need to do is put in your world seed, select bedrock edition and the nether, and then this will show you where all of your nether fortresses are. If you teleport around to each of these in a creative copy of your world, that'll save you a ton of time exploring your nether and survival. You're looking for a nether fortress that is largely exposed, that way you don't need to do a lot of digging, and ideally you want one that is over a large lava lake. You can ignore 
for all the bridges and all the crossroads, those are terrible spots to build a weather skeleton farm. What you're looking for is a lot of these corridors with these fences as the windows. These areas have a very high density of spawn spots. So like this area right here has six or seven hallways crisscrossing over one another. So there's going to be a lot of spawning spaces in this tiny little zone. Basically, what you're looking for is a whole crowd of these hallways all grouped together in one section. It's just kind of like a big blocky building. The thing about Bedrock Edition is mobs only spawn in certain places inside of structures. And we call these places spawn spots, which I've marked out here in blue. So Wither Skeletons can't just spawn anywhere in the fortress. They only spawn on these specific spots. Finding these spots is a super big pain in survival and I would not recommend it, so go ahead and make a copy of your world or make a new world with the same world seed and just find them in creative. You will save literally hours. So on these spots, you can get wither skeletons, you can get blazes, you can get magma cubes, you can get zombie pigmen and skeletons. Now the cubes, pigmen, and skeletons can spawn anywhere else, just like regularly, because they are just part of the regular spawns in the nether, and piglins can spawn anywhere as well. This means that we still need to spawn a proof of the fortress, either by using buttons or slabs. Finding these silly little spawn spots is a little bit of an ordeal. It's gonna take me a couple minutes to explain it, but once you get the hang of it, it's actually really simple. Just bear with me. Once you found a good nether fortress to build at in your creative world, you need to get yourself a couple of command blocks. So just run this command right here, give at s command block, and then place this down. This first one is going to be a repeat and needs redstone. And the second one is going to be a chain, unconditional, always active. We're going to place a lever on this back one, and then we're going to put this command on the inside of it. Basically, what this is going to do is it's going to find all the wither skeletons and put a piece of wool underneath them. That way, it's telling us where they're spawning. The second command is just going to be kill at E with a radius of 100. You can find both of these commands in the description of the video, so you can just copy and paste it. Before you turn this on and just run a quick kill command that way it gets rid of everything and then turn it on real quick anywhere that a wither skeleton spawns we're gonna have a piece of wool placed down and this is gonna tell us where every single one of our spawn spots are so now your job is to go through and destroy all of the walls of these hallways basically break out all of these fences and all of these walls because oftentimes there's a lot of spawn spots underneath these walls you can also use a command like this one to clear out all those fences automatically for you and then that'll make your job a little bit easier or you can use a command like this one just to clear out all those blocks automatically for you you should also remove all of these stairs that are in the nether fortress because there could be spawning spots underneath these as well be careful not to flatten the entire area there was a hallway up here and as you can see we're getting spawn spots but i flattened this out and then nothing spawned so height is kind of important you want to leave the nether fortress at about the rough height that it generated otherwise you might lose out some spawning spots and once you have an area cleared out all you need to do is stand back and wait for a little while and then you'll see all of these blue dots are starting to get filled in i would suggest leaving this for maybe like five or ten minutes because you only get a dot whenever a wither skeleton spawns and as you can see we've revealed a lot of spawning spaces just this little square right here there's already 26 so the more that you can get into a smaller area the absolute better two more important notes there will always be at least a one block gap between your spawning spaces if you ever see two that are touching or maybe you know a two by two or some that are diagonal that is due to just a little bit of a glitch with the command blocks so place down yourself a sunflower or otherwise find north so this is north and that means that whatever block is to the northwest is actually a false spawning spot because mobs spawn on the northwest corner so that means that this one is false and not a real spawning spot now you need to decide which one of your spawning spots you're actually going to be using. So I just built this a temporary little circle right here to give us an idea of what we can get with a single piglin. And basically you want all of your dots to be within that circle and you can see how to build it right here. So go ahead and get the coordinates for any of these spots that are within this circle. And then you need to write those down and find those spawning spots in your survival world. That way we can actually build the farm. And moving over to survival 
cool. Now that you have the coordinates for all of your spawn spots, you should be able to mark those out with ease and clear out this area. The first thing that you want to do is fill in all of the holes in the floor. Just make yourself a nice big flat floor. I would also recommend building up the circle as well out of some glass blocks at your head height. That way you know the range of your farm and mark out the center block as well because this is where we're going to be putting our trident killer. So now you need to find north. I usually do this by putting down a sunflower. This always faces to the east. So if you turn left, that is going to be north. And now we need to go to each one of our spawning spots. So this is incredibly easy. You just need to break out that block place down a dirt block below it, a wither rose right there, and then three glass blocks to the north, the northwest, and the west direction, and do that for every single one of your spawning spaces. If any of these glass blocks are outside of your glass circle, then you might need to just abandon that spawning spot like this one out here you're not going to be able to get the wither skeletons to pathfind correctly so just put a slab over it once you built up your little cell put in a temporary solid block and a temporary slab that way you're preventing spawns as you're building the farm so make this little cell at each one of your spawning spots and then you need to cover the rest of the floor in buttons or you can make this entire floor out of glass blocks or if you want to make it kind of fancy looking, you could cover this entire floor and carpets. Basically, we just need to spawn proof this area. And this is what it looks like when everything is spawn proofed and when all these cells are built. Now we're going to work on the kill chamber. So go to the very center of your circle and you need yourself a two by two hole in the middle. As you can see, I have two spawning spaces next to this and these are at the actual floor level. This one is going to be spawning mobs basically directly into the hole. But this one is going to be spawning mobs kind of like right between these four blocks. So I'm just going to place a glass block right there to the north to prevent those pigmen spawns. And then we're going to place an ourselves a two by two wall of glass blocks right here with a couple buttons right there and a couple of buttons over here you could use a coral fans instead of buttons or you could also use some trap doors right here whatever works for you but currently buttons work very well now we're going to place in two temporary blocks and then we want ourselves four glass panes right here and now we just need to get a piglin on top of there Piglins are pretty easy to find, but you want to get one with a sword so that he doesn't try to shoot the wither skeletons. Just get this guy into a chest boat. We use a chest boat so that nothing else gets into the boat with him. And then just click on that with a lead and you can easily drag this around and bring it to your farm. Once you get him into the farm, you can easily pillar up and just kind of drag this guy onto the center. It's a kind of a difficult thing to do if you're brand new to it, but it's also hilarious as well. So just drag him roughly into the center, click on the boat to get rid of that lead, and then definitely name tag this guy as well so he doesn't despawn just kind of nudge that bow generally into the center of those glass panes and now we're going to be digging down below the farm by about 26 blocks so this is block number one and that is block number two three four and all the way down to 26 now i would recommend that you stand between two blocks when you are digging down that way you don't accidentally fall into lava and now that you've dug down by 26 blocks, this is going to be the floor of your killing chamber. So we need to place in ourselves a piston right there, right there, right there, and there. Place in solid blocks in all of the corners of them, and then a dropper in each one of the corners up above them. An observer facing each one of those droppers like so, and then a solid block above each one of the pistons. It's a lot of spinning around in a circle, but it should look something like that. So and now we're going to break out this block and place in a hopper facing towards that piston and then break out that one and place in a hopper facing that way we're also going to break out this block right here and place that with a glass block that way we can see into the kill chamber and we're also going to just mine out through here that way we can actually escape the kill chamber and you should also have your hallway out of here this is going to be access to the top of the farm your nether portals whatever clear out some more area around your trident killer and we just need to place in ourselves a couple of chests in this area right here for storage and then do the same thing on the opposite side as well just place in a couple more double chests you can of course build up your own custom sorting system you're going to want a couple of item filters and then basically just throw everything else into the fire because you're going to be getting a lot of stone swords 
This drop shoe is a little bit too deep for with the skeletons to survive it. So we're just going to place in a couple of buttons above our trident killer, just a few blocks up and then place in one lava bucket. And that will actually break their fall and reduce their fall damage. And then all the skeletons that fall into here will be relatively weak and good to go. Throw in yourself an unenchanted regular trident and then get in yourself a lever on this block right here. Flick that once and you should see everything go around. Unflick that and now your trident killer is active and ready to go. You're basically going to be standing on the other side of this wall. You will pick up all of the experience through the wall and that'll give you a lot of levels to repair all of your tools and of course get you some nice enchanting. So now you can go ahead and fill in all of these extra blocks and make sure that everything down here is spawn proof. Back to the top of the farm, we need to start spawn proofing around it. So spawn proof using either buttons or slabs and the priority for you should be the nether fortress since this is where your blazes and other things are going to be spawning so spawn proof your nether fortress first and you need to go at least 20 blocks in every direction from this farm ideally up to 40 blocks away but that's a lot of spawn proofing so you can work on it bit by bit any spawn proofing that you do is going to help you massively increase your rates though and now it's time to remove the temporary blocks that you have above your wither roses all throughout the farm. And I would recommend running when you do this. You do it very, very quickly and get out of here. And it's kind of scary how fast they spawn. It's like there's always a wither skeleton. It's very important that you hold a looting three sword as you AFK. That way the looting three effect is automatically applied to all the wither skeletons and you get all the wither skulls. And we already got our first wither skull. You're going to be getting wither skulls, bones, and coal very, very quickly. And as you can see, these swords are going to start to pile up. So you do want to get yourself an auto sorter. This farm is honestly insane. It is so simple to build, so cheap, and it works incredibly well. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, then let me know if you comment down below. But if you enjoyed today's video, then drop a like and definitely subscribe so that you don't miss future tutorials. Thank you ever so much for watching. And then there was silence.